Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 14.5 laws of logarithms. 14.5 represents chapter 14, section 5 of the person A level maths, pure maths, year 1 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section, starting with laws of logarithms. If we're adding two logarithms with the same base A, we can write it as a single logarithm to the base A of x multiplied by y, which is xy. This is called the multiplication rule. If we are subtracting two logarithms with the same base a, we can write it as a single logarithm to the base a of x divided by y, which is x over y. This is called the division rule. If we have log base a of x to the power k, we can bring down the power in front of the logarithm. So we have k log base a of x. This is called the power rule. Moving on to the special cases. Log base a of 1 over x. 1 over x is the same as x to the power minus 1. We can bring down the power minus 1 in front of the logarithm using the power rule. So we've got minus log base a of x. Log base a of a is equal to 1 simply because of the fact that if we take a and we raise it to the power 1, that is precisely equal to a. Log base a of 1 is equal to 0 simply because of the fact that if we take a to the power 0, that is equal to 1 where a is a constant greater than 0, a is not equal to 1. These are the key facts of 14.5 laws of logarithms. I'll be implementing these key facts within exam style questions. Let's start with the proof question. Prove that log base a of x plus log base a of y is equal log base a of xy. Let's have a look at the proof. Let log base a of x equal m. This implies that a to the power m is equal x. Let log base a of y equal m. This implies that a to the power n is equal y. Ladies and gents, let's find the product x, y. So x multiplied by y is equal a to the power m multiplied by a to the power n. The base is the same and we're multiplying, hence we can add the powers. This gives me a to the power m plus n. Hence, xy is equal a to the power m plus n. We can rewrite this using logarithms. So we have log to the base a of xy is equal to the power m plus n. m is precisely log base a of x plus n is precisely log base a of y. So we have that this is equal to this. Log base a of x plus log base a of y is equal to log base a of xy. End of proof. Ladies and gents, that there was a proof of the multiplication rule for logarithms. You can adapt this proof to prove the division rule for logarithms and the power rule for logarithms. Here is exam style question 1. Write in terms of log base a of x, log base a of y, and log base a of z, part a, log base a of x squared root y divided by z squared. Let's have a look at part a. So we have log base a of x squared root y divided by z squared. Inside the logarithm, we have a division, so we can split this logarithm using the division rule. So we have equal log base a of x square root y, take away log base a of z squared. Inside this logarithm, we have a product of two terms, x and square root y. So we can actually split this using the multiplication rule. Equal log base a of x plus log base a of square root y minus log base a of z squared. Okay, so that first term is done. We need to rewrite these two terms over here. Equal log base a of x. Now over here, square root y is the same as y to the power of half. So we have plus log base a of y to the power of half. Take away we can bring down the power 2 using the power rule. So if we use a power rule, bring down the 2, we've got 2 log base a of z. Okay, so the first term and the last term is pretty much done. It's in terms of log base a of x and log base a of z. 
The remaining term is the middle term. We can use the power rule to bring down this power. Okay, so we're going to apply the power rule again. This time on the middle term. So we have equal log base a of x plus a half log base a of y minus 2 log base a of z. And that there, ladies and gents, is this logarithm in terms of log base a of x, log base a of y, and log base a of z. Moving on to part b of exam style question 1. So in part b, we want to rewrite log base a of cube root of ax squared yz to the power 4 in terms of log base a of x, log base a of y, and log base a of z. So in part b, we've got log base a of the cube root of ax squared y z to the power 4. Firstly, I can rewrite this as log base a of in bracket to the power a third because we're taking cube root ax squared y z to the power 4. I can bring down the power using the power rule. Okay, so we can bring down the power in front of the logarithm. Now, inside the logarithm, we have a product of 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. So we can split this as a sum of 4 logarithms using the multiplication rule. So we have equal, a third, okay, square bracket, log base a of a, plus log base a of x squared plus log base a of y plus log base a of z to the power 4 close square bracket okay so now i can apply the power rule on this logarithm and this logarithm to bring down the power so equal a third log base a of a plus 2 log base a of x plus log base a of y plus 4 log base a of z. Okay, so we've applied the power rule. Right, so now if I take a step back, I notice that log base a of a is just 1. So I've got equal a third in bracket 1 plus 2 log base a of x plus log base a of y plus 4 log base a of z close bracket i can now multiply everything inside the bracket with the 1 over 3 so i've got equal 1 over 3 so 1 over 3 times 1 is 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 times 2 log base a of x is 2 over 3 log base a of x plus this times this is a third log base a of y plus this times this is four thirds of log base a of z and that there is this particular logarithm in terms of log base a of x log base a of y and log base a of z this completes exam style question one Moving on to exam style question 2. Given that log base a of 5y minus 4 minus log base a of 2y is equal 3, where y is greater than 0 0.8 and a is between 0 and 1, express y in terms of a. Okay, so ladies and gents, what we need to do over here is firstly, we need to combine the two logarithms using the division rule. We can see that both logarithms have the same base. So using the division rule, we have log base a of 5y minus 4 divided by 2y must equal 3. We can rewrite this. The base of the logarithm is a, so we can take a and we can raise it to the power 3, setting it equal to what we have inside the logarithm. So a to the power 3 is equal 5y minus 4 over 2y. Now we need to make y the subject. We want to express y in terms of a. Firstly, I can multiply both sides of this equation by 2y, giving me 2y a to the power 3 equal 5y minus 4. Now I can take the 5y to the left-hand side, 
this gives me 2y a cubed minus 5y equal minus 4. I can take out a common factor of y. So inside the bracket, I'll have 2 a cubed minus 5. This must equal minus 4. Therefore, y is equal minus 4 divided by 2a to the power 3 minus 5. That there is y in terms of x. This completes exam style question 2. Let's have a look at exam style question 3. Solve the following equation. Log base 3 of 2x plus 5 minus log base 3 of 4x minus 1 equal 2. Ladies and gents, both logarithms have the same base and since we're subtracting, we can apply the division rule to combine the logarithms. So we have log base 3 of 2x plus 5 divided by 4x minus 1. This must equal 2. We can rewrite this equation. The base of the logarithm is 3. We can raise it to the power 2, setting it equal to what we have inside the logarithm. So 3 to the power 2 is equal 2x plus 5 over 4x minus 1. 3 squared is 9. So we have 9 equal 2x plus 5 over 4x minus 1. We can now multiply both sides of the equation by 4x minus 1. This gives us 9 in bracket 4x minus 1 equal 2x plus 5. Expand the bracket so we have 36x minus 9 equal 2x plus 5. Take the x's to the left hand side and the constants to the right hand side gives us the following result. 34x is equal 14. Okay, so now we can work out x. Hence, x is equal 14 divided by 34. x in its simplest form will be 7 over 17. That there's a solution to this logarithmic equation. This completes exam style question 3. Moving on to exam style question 4. Given that log base 3 of x plus 1 is equal 1 plus 2 log base 3 of x minus 1, show that 3x squared minus 7x plus 2 is equal 0. So let's have a look at part A. We've got log base 3 of x plus 1 is equal 1 plus 2 log base 3 of x minus 1. Now what we need to do is combine the logarithms. We want to write this equation so that there's only one logarithm involved. So ladies and gents, I can take this logarithm to the left hand side. This gives me log base 3 of x plus 1 minus 2 log base 3 of x minus 1 is equal 1. I cannot combine the two logarithms using the division rule as of yet. I know the bases are the same, I know I've got a difference, but the issue is the 2 in front of the logarithm. I need to take that to the power using the power rule before I combine the logarithms. So using the power rule, I've got log base 3 of x plus 1 minus log base 3 of x minus 1 in brackets to the power 2 equal 1. Now the bases are the same and we've got a difference, hence we can combine the two logarithms using the division rule. So we have log base 3 of x plus 1 in bracket divide by x minus 1 in bracket squared equal 1. Okay, so at this stage I can take the base 3 and I can raise it to the power 1, setting it equal to what I have inside the logarithm. So I've got 3 to the power 1 equal x plus 1 in bracket divide by x minus 1 in bracket squared. Okay, so I've got 3 equal x plus 1 in bracket divide by x minus 1 in bracket squared. Now I can multiply both sides of the equation by x minus 1 in bracket squared. So this gives me 3 multiplied by x minus 1 in bracket squared equal x plus 1 in bracket. We can open up this bracket okay, into two parts. And we know that that must equal x plus 1. Okay, so if we expand the double brackets, we get the following result x squared minus 2x plus 1. This must equal x plus 1. Now we can expand this bracket with the 3. This gives us 3x squared 
minus 6x plus 3 equal. I don't need to include that bracket now, I can just put x plus 1. Taking everything to the left hand side gives us 3x squared minus 6x minus x is minus 7x and then 3 take away 1 is positive 2 equal 0 as required. Let's have a look at part b of exam style question 4. Hence, so we must refer back to our answer in part a or otherwise solve a log base 3 of x plus 1 equal 1 plus 2 log base 3 of x minus 1. Now from part a we have shown that this equation is the same as writing the equation 3x squared minus 7x plus 2 equal 0. So this was from part a. Hence solving this equation is the same as solving this equation. So we can use the quadratic formula x equal minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a to solve this quadratic equation. So we have a equal 3, b equal minus 7 and c equal 2. So if I substitute my a, b and c into the quadratic formula I get two roots and these two roots are x equal 2 and x equal a third. So these are the solutions to this particular logarithmic equation. This completes exam style question 4. Let's have a look at exam style question 5. Given that a and b are positive constants and that a is greater than b, solve the simultaneous equations a plus b equal 13, log base 6 of a plus log base 6 of b equal 2. Ladies and gents, the first step is to label the two equations. So we have equation 1 and equation 2. Now if I take equation 2, I can actually combine the two logarithms. We have the same base and we're adding the logarithms, hence we can use the multiplication rule to combine the logarithms. We have log base 6 of AB equal 2. Now I can rewrite this using powers. So 6 to the power 2 must equal what I have inside the logarithm. So 6 to the power 2 is equal AB. Hence 36 is equal AB. Now I can make B the subject, so I've got B equal 36 over A. I can call this equation 3. So now I can substitute equation 3 into equation 1 to eliminate the B so that the equation is in terms of A, so that we can solve for A. Okay, so if we substitute equation 3 into equation 1, we'll get the following result. A plus my B, which is 36 over A, must equal 13. Now I can multiply the entire equation by a. So if I do that, I get a squared plus 36 equals 13 a. I can take everything to the left hand side, giving me a squared minus 13 a plus 36 equal 0. So we can now solve this quadratic equation. So if I solve this quadratic equation using the quadratic formula, I would get the following two solutions for a. I would have a equal 9, a equal 4. Now I can substitute these a values into equation 3 to work out the b values. So if I substitute a equal 9 into equation 3, I'll get b equal 36 divided by 9, which is 4. If I substitute a equal 4 into equation 3, I would get b equal 36 divided by 4, which is 9. Now which pair do I take? Well if I go back to the technicality of the question, I know that a is greater than b. So since a is greater than b, we must take this pair over here, okay, as the solution. Therefore, a is equal 9 and b is equal 4. That there completes exam style question 5 and this teaching video 14.5 laws of logarithms. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.